Hey, how's it going? This is Mr. Perry, your physics teacher here. So we're going to do a lab today. This is the kinetic energy car ramp experiment. Okay, so the experiment sheet looks like this. All right, you'll be able to find it in the September 13th folder. All right. Now, with this lab, all right, we are focusing on the amount of energy that our car has when it rolls down the ramp. A big part of that is calculating the car's velocity. Now we've already done that, all right? So if you haven't done that yet, you can uh, check out the previous lab, the car ramp velocity experiment, all right? But for this lamp, for this uh, <laughs> experiment, uh, I'll go ahead and read the overview. So in this experiment, students will roll a car down a ramp to calculate the amount of energy the car has when in motion. So this will grow in their understanding of the energy involved in a collision and how that energy changes with velocity. All right. So in this lab, all we're going to do is uh, essentially have a visual representation of the amount of energy that a car has when it rolls down a ramp. And we're going to calculate that energy. All right. Now, again, to calculate that energy, we're going to need the velocity, which was uh, calculated in a previous lab. All right. So today we're going to work on that visual representation. All right. So uh, for starters, the materials we will need books, our car ramp, our car, a ruler and a wooden block. OK, so for our procedure, we're going to first take one of our books, put it on the table. We're going to take our ramp, put it against the book. All right, I like to put it on the inside flat. And then we're going to lay the ruler along the side of the ramp. Now, you can keep it here. It's unnecessary. Uh, you will need the ruler, though. I like to have mine off to the side, so I'll do, go ahead and do that. Now, we're going to place the wooden block flush against the ramp. Okay, so we want the back of this uh, wooden block directly against the ramp where it touches the table. All right, now we're gonna put our car up here. We're just gonna let it roll down the ramp until it hits the block. And when it moves the block, okay, we're gonna take our ruler and use centimeters to measure how far it moved the block from the ramp, okay? Now, this block's movement is not actually telling us um, the amount of energy that our car had. Um, down the ramp, we would need to do calculations to figure that out. However, seeing how far the block moves from the ramp, this is going to give us that visual representation. And we're going to use some of the other calculations we made, um, uh, primarily using velocity, to actually calculate the car's energy as it comes down the ramp. So let's go ahead and do this experiment. It also asks us to measure the height of the book. So I already did measure my book height, so I'm just going to fill that out in my table and uh, you can go ahead and measure yours as we move along. So go ahead and measure the height of this book. For me, uh, the first book is three centimeters high. All right. Now let me go ahead and let this car hit the block. Nice. Okay, solid contact there. So I'm going to go ahead and measure my block. Now, sometimes one part of your block may push out further than the other. This was a pretty direct hit, so that worked out well. But in the case that your block is crooked, measure the side that is closest to the ramp. So don't measure the side that moved further away. Measure the side that's closer and uh that will help you stay a bit more accurate and reasonable with your answers. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and measure from the ramp to the block. All right, so for that one, I got about 1.8 centimeters. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and include that in my table. Now, my table also asks me for the velocity of the car while moving down the ramp. That velocity is in my other experiment. So I'm just going to go back to that experiment page to fill in this part of the table. All right, but for now, I'm just gonna measure the height of my books and uh, the displacement of my block. All right, so we did one book. Now let's go ahead and do two books. All right, I'm gonna take my ramp and 
pop it right in there. I'll go ahead and put my block against my board. Now let's measure the height of the books. All right, so for this book height, I get about 6.4 centimeters. Uh, no, actually 6.5, 6.5 centimeters. Okay, now let's go ahead and roll this card down the ramp. Nice, all right, another solid hit. So let's go ahead and measure. All right, so it looks like I get about 3.4 centimeters. Okay, so again, as you're following along, record your numbers for the experiment if you are able to do this at home. All right, so I'm gonna add a third book up top. I'm gonna go ahead and place my ramp inside of the book. Place my black against the uh, edge of the ramp and the table. Now I'll go ahead and measure my book's height. All right, so I get about 10.4 centimeters measuring my book's height. And let's go ahead and roll this card down the ramp. All right, so this was a great example of seeing how if I don't hit the block exactly in the middle, it'll turn the block outwards. But I still have this area, so this is the side closest to the ramp, so that's what I'm gonna go ahead and measure. Okay, so it looks like I have 6.4 centimeters for that displacement of the block from the ramp. All right, great, so I have all of my numbers now for my table. Again, my velocities are in my other experiment write-up, and so I'm gonna use those velocities in order to complete this lab, all right? so. At this point, I would clean up my lab station, but now let's go ahead to the board and finish this out. All right, so here we've got our da data table, okay? Uh, we have the heights of the books that I measured, my blocks displacement that we measured as well. And here I have the velocities from my previous experiment that I just copied from my old experiment and brought them here. Now these velocities are lined up so that they are the velocities at the correct ramp height. So when the ramp in the book were three centimeters high, this was my velocity. When they were six and a half centimeters high, this was my velocity and the same for 10.4 centimeters high, this was my calculated velocity. So now that we have that, we're gonna move on to the next part of this lab where we calculate the kinetic energy. So we visually see how far the block was moved, but we actually wanna know precisely what the energy of our car was as it rolled down that ramp and struck the block. All right, so over here, we can see some of those calculations for kinetic energy. Now, kinetic energy has an equation, which we see up here. So the kinetic energy is one half the mass of our car times the car's velocity squared. Now, I already uh, measured uh, our car's mass. So M is gonna be equal to 0 0.038 kilograms. Okay, so that's what we're using. And now we're gonna go ahead into our calculations. So let me roll this down a bit. Awesome. So here you can see uh, some of our calculations. We've got our kinetic energy equals one half the mass of our car. Now this is the velocity when the car ramp was the height of one book. All right, so we're gonna square that and that's gonna give us a total of 0 0.017 joules. Now remember, even though our units are gonna come out kilograms times meters squared per second squared, that is equal to a joule. So 0 0.017 joules is our energy for when our car rolls from a height of one book high. We're gonna go ahead and measure the energy from the height of two books high. So we plug in that velocity, 1.60 meters per second, and that gives us an energy of 0 0.049 joules. 
All right, now we're gonna go ahead and measure the energy when our car rolls from a height of three books high. We go ahead, one half the mass of the car times the velocity, which was 2.35 meters per second when it's three books high. And we get an energy of 0 0.105 joules. All right, so now that we have all of our energy, energies measured, let's go ahead and throw them in a table. Now, the basic table that you're gonna need is just the velocity and the kinetic energy, but I went ahead and put the block displacement just because I think that helps us see uh, the effect of the energy even more, okay? So let's go ahead and look at the basic uh, table that I want you all to have in your experiment write-up. So you're gonna list your velocities in one column, okay? how fast the car was going when it was one block, one book high, two books high, and three books high when it rolled from those heights. All right, and now we're gonna list our kinetic energies next to them. I wanna point out that immediately you can see that as the velocity increases, we also see an increase in the energy of the car, okay? Um, now, not only do we see that, but when we look at the displacement of the block, we see that trend continue. So the more energy a car has, the further it moves the block, okay? And we continue to see the block's displacement go up as the car's energy goes up, all right? So when you do your experiment write-up, you can point out a number of these relationships. So not only do, does the velocity increase um, as the kinetic energy increases or you know, the kinetic energy increases as the velocity increases. But we also see that as our kinetic energy increases, the block is moved further and further. So more energy allows that block, it seems, to move further and further. 